Oh, God damn it. Fine. All right, I'll talk about 2019. 2019 was a year. It was all right. There are so many things happening that I don't even know where to friggin' begin. I tried writing a script for this video and like it went nowhere, so I'm just gonna do this on the fly. I moved different cities like a bunch of freaking times, streamed a bunch of games, had a bunch of fun, uh, but also like this year was just like a mess for me. A wise man once said that a streamer is really encapsulated by the games he plays or whatever. So let's go over the best and worst five games of this year, you cynical bastards. Squeezing its cheeks into number five, we got Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Boom! The title drop. Bam! So this game is from my childhood, I love it a lot, but also it was just like a ton of fun to play on stream, especially with everybody naming all the Pokemon and that like weird inside joke about Christmas we had. Also, side note, it's literally the best run through of Pokemon XD I've ever had with me not missing a Pokemon a single time, so ha, take that, dad. I'm not gonna lie, as I do this format more and more, it becomes a little bit more cynical to actually have like a worst five games on stream where it's like, hey, remember the worst times I had on the stream? Uh, so I couldn't really think of like five games to go with that weren't one shot. So I guess number five goes to Mini Metro. I'm not even sure if I have footage. Uh, this might be just yoinks from YouTube. If so, thank you, YouTuber, for whoever you did that. This is it's just a game that I played that wasn't that great. <laughs> Move on, please. Alrighty, a little fun fact. Uh, I played like the first two chapters of Paper Mario in my childhood, but then I never actually finished the goddamn game. So, uh, Paper Mario, the first one for the N64, gets the best fourth spot on this list. This game is a lot of fun. Not gonna lie, playing it, uh, it makes me retroactively think less of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door because, like, it, it's very clear that a lot of its story structures and stuff like that were just yoinked from Paper Mario. Gr granted, made better, but. Oh man, I swore. Put a sensor sound over that, me. God, this is hard to do without a script. Paper Mario was fun. Next. Vindictus is a game. Uh, it's it's a game made by Nexon, the guys that made Maple Story, and uh, <coughs> it's one of those games. It's one of those MMO RPGs. If you're uh, down with the kids, uh, it it was it was okay, but like it was a bunch of drop frames, and it just felt like a cynical MMO. And I was like, all right, it could have been a better game, but at least a few people were. F hype about it. Damn it, I swore again. Put another sensor sound. <laughs> I need to write a script for this next year. Oh, okay, I've got stuff to say about this. Jumpstart fourth grade adventures. Kids game. Horror game? Can you believe this is in the top five best stream games? Yeah, this was like one of the first games I streamed this year, but oh my god, it was fun. Like, you guys think I'm kidding, but like, there's an ungodly amount of content in this game, like 12 to 16 hours worth of content for a kid's game, a kid's educational, toad in a well, piss away four years of your life game. I had a bunch of fun playing this game, and if you were in the chat, you had a bunch of fun too, don't lie. I'm sorry that it's only number three, but we had a, a, a lot of good games this year. Alright, worst at number three, it just goes to show that this year was a great year and I don't really have a lot of ideas for, like, what was bad, but, uh, Mabinogi, another <laughs> MMO by, uh, Nexon. <laughs> you think I'm biased? You know, this game had fun moments, I'm not gonna lie, it just felt exhausting to play. I think it was mainly because, like, the stream, uh, managed to find a lot of people who played Mabinogi and they were like, Oh, you should do this, and you should do that, and I just felt more stressed playing it than anything else. So I think that's what clinched this over Vindictus. Still a good game, it, it was fun, it had a lot of stuff to do. I, just not stuff that I will do. Haha. <laughs> Take that, society. Dead Rising is one of those games. It's very frustrating because there were times when I absolutely abhorred the mess that was Dead Rising, but there were other times when I was like, Weehee, this is fun. Okay. Dead Rising, if it would get, like, an honorable mention, would have gotten the honorable mention for having, like, the most low moments and high moments, because I was furious with this game sometimes, but I also just had a bunch of fun. Video game about killing zombies. This is fun. Also, the characters were really crazy in it, and there was a lot of imagination that went into that game, and, uh, yeah. Especially for a game from, like, what, 2006? Hold on, let me look it up. Yeah, August 8th, 2006. Uh, not a bad game. Not a bad game. Hot take. Dead Rising? Pretty okay game. Number two. Dead Rising. What's a good contender for the worst game this year? I don't know. Maybe the game that was so bad that my computer literally broke, uh, refusing to play the game. Uh, so I had like halfway through October or whatever the- I don't even remember when. Uh, I had to get a new computer. 
And uh, the last game that I actually streamed successfully was Fear 3, and like my computer conked out halfway through playing this game, which I honestly think was God trying to tell me something, because this game wasn't good. It's really up its own butt, and it really took itself seriously, and uh, I don't know, it was just a standard first person shooter with just like nothing really inspiring behind it, and it was just sort of like, okay. This is a game. Why Why the heck not? Alright, that's everything from 5 to 2. Are you ready for some honorable and dishonorable mentions? Let's watch Mojo the heck out of this. Are you ready? I am. Let's go. Okay, under the good categories. Uh, we Were Here too gets the Goodbye Default Award by playing it with uh, a good friend of mine, Austin, from the stream. Uh, Luigi's Mansion gets the 10-year challenge award for finally getting gold on Sir Weston for the first time. And by that I mean like a, uh, like a before we get the hidden mansion type of thing. You have to know Luigi's Mansion li lingo to know what I'm talking about, but it's it's really challenging to get Sir Weston in the in the non-hidden mansion, and uh, I did it uh, for the first time ever since picking up Luigi's Mansion. It was the first video game I ever played, so um, it's, pre it's pretty good. Blind Date gets the colon zero award for the craziest moments I've ever experienced on stream. Oh, Crossing Souls. It gets the Media Darling award for just having so many clippable moments and having so much fun with it. And Goosebumps gets the Small Things award for just being a really fun game despite being like a small, like one or two stream experience. Okay, so RuneScape gets the Unfair Bias award for Jagex freaking banning me for me playing too much, I guess, and it thinking that I was using mods when I freaking wasn't. Uh, Lisa gets the Disappointing Jesus Award for coming back to life a second time and, like, still not being fun. Uh, Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc gets the Isn't It Obvious Award for just so many anime tropes. I got so many. Monopoly Tycoon gets the Divine Intervention Award for the stream being interrupted by a power outage than me just going, I guess I'm not playing this anymore. And the coveted Game Polar's Worst Ad Award goes to... Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Congratulations to all nominees. Man, I, I always feel bad about like going, oh, this was the worst game. You know what, you know what feels even worse than that? Uh, giving this award to an indie game. There were so many moments where I was just like, oh, I want this game to be fun and good. Uh, but the Marvelous Mistake just had so many frustrating moments where like, the controls were really weird, and also, uh, it had this like, mechanic where there's dogs. The dogs suck! They find you everywhere. Uh, they do everything in their power to find you. Just makes the game so f <laughs> Dang it, I swore again. Uh, it makes the game so difficult to just like, play. Normally, it's not even stealth game anymore, it's pain simulator. Getting over it with Bennett 40. And also on top of that, I'm not really much of a dog person, especially because of like the more disgusting attributes of dogs, like the sounds they make with their mouths. And so, the, the marvelous mistake had like this thing where if the dog was finding you, it would play this ungodly loud clip of dogs sniffing, and like, you needed to hear it to know that the dogs were tracking you, but it also made me almost throw up on stream because the sound was that disgusting, and just- UGH! I'm not ready for you, the marvelous mistake. Go take your gameplay elsewhere. Get better controls. <laughs> How do I even describe this game? Okay, so, uh... Whatever, pretensions aside, Zero Escape Virgin's Last Reward. Best streamed game of 2019. Like, there, there's no competition here. What do I- what do I even say about this game? It's amazing, I love it, and it had one of the most compelling stories ever in a video game. If you know the Tweed Man really well, you'll know that I don't really care that much for games that are up their own butt with the whole like, Oh, multiple universe theory, uh, oh, Doctor Who, Stephen Moffat, uh. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> But this game, it did it right, and I'm amazed at that, because I normally am very cynical about that. It had amazing characters, which you just wanted to see what they do next, even if they weren't relatable. Dio. This game had a brilliant soundtrack that its sequel f <laughs> murdered. Everyone complains about the animations and art style, but honestly, after like the first, I don't know, hour, you kind of get to ignore it, and it's just like, eh, this is the style of the game, so whatever. Basically, what I'm saying is, if you want to play this game, and you're just like, oh man, the art style, Buy it anyway, it'll be amazing after the first hour, so... Ugh. Oh yeah, the gameplay. The gameplay is amazing! Uh, it's a lot of fun escape game mechanics, and I'd even say it's more fun and also, like, brain-picky than, um, 999, its predecessor. I had this game for, like, three years before I actually played it, because it didn't play on my old computer, and then I got a new computer, as I mentioned, and then I played it, and... God, it was amazing! Also, uh, worthy mention, 
Uh, not only did this game have some of the funniest moments on stream, this game had the first moment ever where a game got me to cry on stream because of something that happened in the game. I think I've cried on stream like once or twice before because, you know, it wasn't doing so well. <laughs> Woo! Uh, but yeah, this game, like, due to just the game and the story, got me to cry on stream. Not gonna spoil it in case anybody wants to play it. For God's sakes, I'm recommending this game. Uh, yeah. If you never got to see me play Virtue's Last Reward, go grab it and play it. It's amazing. It's literally on my top 10 games of all time I've ever played now. It's that good. Go play it. Anyway, I'm late making this video because, I don't know, 2020 got busy for me. So yeah, I'm putting out the video now. Uh, happy 2020, everybody. We're like a sixth of the way through it. Dang it. I'm bad at making videos on time. We know. I mean, we know. But yeah, here's to 2020. Uh, I've already played a few fun games, and I'm looking forward to all the fun games and fun memories I'm gonna get to have with you guys this year. It's gonna be fun! Uh, it's already been fun. I appreciate you all. How do I end videos? Bye! <laughs>